Our next guest is an incredible actor and singer you know from Frozen 2, The Wrestler and Westworld. We are such fans of hers here at the show. The spectacular Evan Rachel Wood is on the show tonight. How are you, Evan? How nice to see you. How are you doing? Oh, so good to see you. I'm good, you know? I think I'm hanging in there just like everybody else, so... <laughs> yeah, I feel like... It's I feel like you weren't here that long ago, and yet in the same time, it feels like it was a decade ago. Yeah, it's what, what's the saying? It's this this year, this month has been the longest five years of my life. Like, yeah. it's just, it seems time is is lost on all of us. I think it's insane. Now you've you've done something which I sort of wish I'd done at the start of lockdown. You decided to start growing your own garden. How's it I going? Did. It, um. It's going really well. I've never been able to keep anything alive. I've killed every plant. And for some reason, this like primal instinct kicked in when lockdown happened and I immediately got soil and seedlings. And now I have multiple plants, herbs, uh, veggies. My son goes out there and picks raw vegetables and eats them now. I don't know what happened. I'm like drying herbs. One of my friends is concerned that I'm becoming a witch. Um, <laughs> it's, it's gotten out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's quite the turn, isn't it? From drying out some herbs to being a witch. <laughs> now, your son, you just mentioned him then, your son is seven years old. Does he understand that his mum is one of the stars of Frozen 2? He does understand. Um, and when I first started recording for Frozen 2, I obviously learned the song and I tested it out on him first and I would sing it to him when he went to bed and that was our bedtime routine. And then when we watched the movie, it was our bedtime routine. It was, you know, my character was putting the kids to bed and singing the song. And he was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. They just animated what we do at night. He was kind of like, this is just our bedtime routine. This is the song you sing me. And then, <laughs> and then I think he figured, he figured out what was going on. And um, he, he probably doesn't want me to say this, so I won't say it. But he, he gets quite emotional every time that he hears Show Yourself. It's like one of his favorite songs now. Um, oh. But he is also tired of hearing me sing the songs. I think at first it was like, sing me the lullaby. And now it's like, mom, if I have to hear the song one more time, I swear to God, like, please stop. Um, yeah, so but that'll come that back point. round. It'll come back round. Yeah, I was cool a... for a second. And now it's just, no, it's not <laughs> cool anymore. Now, I really want to talk to you about this. I don't know if there's many people uh, who, who know this at home who are watching. You were incredibly instrumental in passing a law right here in the state of California called the Phoenix Act. And I think this yes. is an incredible thing that you've done. For anyone who doesn't know, explain to them what the Phoenix Act is. Well, not a lot of people know that uh, certain crimes have a time limit on, um, on, on, on being able to report. So you only have a certain amount of time to report crimes. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can't do anything. And I m myself am a victim of domestic violence and um, by the time I had sort of recovered from what had happened and processed the trauma and felt safe enough to come forward, my time had, had run out. And um, I, that didn't feel right to me. So I, I put a team together and um, worked for about a year and a half on this bill called the Phoenix Act, which would expand the amount of time that you had to report, which is called the statute of limitations. Um, to give victims uh, more time to to come back from their trauma and 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 to feel safe, and there's certainly more work to be done. But we passed the law unanimously in California, and now victims have uh, five years to report instead of three. So we got two extra years. Um, so it's a very a big deal. It's never been done. That yeah. is a brilliant thing. That's so incredible. Um, that's that's I think it's so it's so brilliant. Uh, well done. That is an incredible Thank thing you. to do with your time and your spirit. Uh, let's talk about your new movie, Kajillion Air. For anyone who doesn't know, tell them what it's about and who you play. Well, I don't really know how to. It's such a hard movie to describe because um, it, it's a Miranda July film. She creates her own worlds for you to fall into, much like a you know a Wes Anderson movie is a Wes Anderson movie. Miranda July is just so uniquely her um, in tone and in style. Um, but it's basically about a family of drifters, really bad con artists, and, uh, and their daughter, my character, is named Old Dolio. And uh, she 
knows that something is missing in her life but can't quite put her finger on it. And um, it's sort of about her journey realizing that she's never really felt true affection or unconditional love. And um, all that sort of changed when she meets uh, Melanie, who is played by Gina Rodriguez. Um, in a nutshell, that's what the film's about. But. And your, your <laughs> character, you've chosen... Your character speaks in quite a different way to you do. If it, like she has a, she's got a deeper voice, right? Was that... How do you come to that? Is that something you work with a, with a director and so I sort of feel like she should talk like this? <laughs> well, Miranda and I did sort of start building her from the ground up the second I signed on to do the film. We were rehearsing, we were watching videos, we were... Uh, and, and Miranda had such a vision for this character, but she asked me if I could do a lower voice. And the funny thing is, is I'm a singer, like you mentioned, and I actually have a naturally very low voice, but... I was told that if I wanted to have a healthy singing voice, I had to learn how to get rid of that and speak in a higher register. And when I told the director that, she was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, can I, can I hear your real voice? And I said, well, I mean, I guess if I could speak in my normal voice, it, it would probably be more down here. And she said, can you go even lower than that? And I said, what, you mean, you mean like down here? <laughs> and she was like, that's the voice, <laughs> like, that's it, do that. Um, and that's sort of how we, uh, we landed on Old Olio's voice. Well, congratulations on the film. Your performance, as all of your performances are, is absolutely...